Um, welcome everyone tonight. Um, unfortunately, um, the mayor won't be joining us. She is safe. Assured. I'd like to call the meeting to order of the Dunsmuir City Council on October 1st, 2020 at 6.04 p.m. Councilman Arth, would you like to lead us in the flag salute? Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Vice Mayor. I pledge the allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which, for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For all. Okay, I'll do the roll call. Uh, we got uh, Council Member Arth. I am here. Council Member Ryan. Present. Council Member Deutsch. Present. Council Member Kaiser. From the beach of Crescent City, I'm present. All right, and I believe Mayor Lucchese is absent. All right. Uh, we'll move on to item three, special presentations and announcement. Uh, none are scheduled for today. If anyone um, has a special presentation or announcement that they'd like to have at this meeting, you could contact city staff uh, for future meetings. We'll move forward to item four, public comment. This is the general public comment where any person uh, can come up and speak for three minutes on items not on the agenda. So items on the agenda will be our local hazard mitigation plan, discussion of Hunter Cable about providing fiber to Dunsmuir, discussion with Chief Padilla about the state of fire safety in Dunsmuir, and discussion of a sale of city-owned parcel on Shearer Avenue. So anything not one of those items, um, please come forward and comment on. You can raise your hand under the participants tab and get in line and you can have your three minutes. Or if you're dialing in by phone, I believe it's star nine, that'll serve the same function to raise your hand. Uh, we have Tim Holt who would like to speak. Uh, go ahead, Tim. Okay, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, I just have several, a couple things. Um, first of all, I want to commend the city for what I think is an effort to find ways to keep the Children's Park open in its current location. I know there's some tweaking and difficulties, but I think this is a great path to follow. It is obviously a very visible location, both for our residents, children of our residents and tourists. So hope that can succeed. Um, I have a question to throw out about enforcement of the vacant building ordinance. Um, as near as I can tell, since the pandemic started, uh, and you look at downtown Dunsmuir, only one Dunsmuir business is actually closed. I'm not even sure that's because of the pandemic, and that would be the Doha. Pet store, hardware store, music store, the Haven, uh, all of them and others, and of course our restaurants have managed to find a way to survive. I believe also, um, we're going to have two new businesses, uh, cannabis businesses, opening up fairly soon. So my question I'm throwing out is, can't we expect the owners of vacant buildings right now to find tenants? Since our business seem, seem to be at least surviving and doing okay. And last thing on my list here, um, and this is something, and it, you know, well, we, there's the issue of, of voter mistrust that sometimes arises, especially as we approach elections. And I have suggested to the past city manager and to the <laughs> manager that we're paying higher rates on our utilities. It would be really helpful if there were a report, either at a city council meeting and or you inserted a paragraph or two in each utility bill simply saying this is what we're doing with your money to fix our utilities it would be very easy very simple and believe me you're 30 seconds tim okay uh, i'm almost through um it would really help in your relationship with voters in terms of telling them what their money's going for so 
I'm done. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Mr. Holt. All right, is there any more public comment? I'd like to remind the folks that are on the telephone that if you would like to make a public comment, you can press uh, star nine to raise your hand and star six to unmute yourself. And this is the uh, general public comment time. If anyone would like to make a general public comment to the city council, um, they can do so now. Seeing none, I will close our general public comment period and move forward into item five, staff comments and uh, council comments. Uh, city manager. Sure, um, just a couple things. The um, I wanted to share with everybody that the uh, butterfly bridge replacement project is uh, well underway. We're in preliminary engineering and uh, working on structural uh, work on that bridge. And we hope to get out and do some, um, you know, just all of our pre-work here uh, in the fall and then start uh, full bore in spring. Um, the other bit of news is, you know, everybody has been talking about the uh, getting the Mossbray trail project done and, and our big issue up to this point, our big stumbling block is getting through to Union Pacific and getting somebody to pay attention to us. Um, we, we've started to uh, get to that point. It seems I finally found somebody over at UP, keep your fingers crossed, that seems to be willing to shepherd this project through. Uh, got a preliminary engineering agreement signed with Union Pacific and the Trails Association has 95% drawings that um, they've got, they're finishing those up. And I get those back to the representative that I'm speaking to. She promises me that UP structural engineering can turn those around in about six weeks. The, um, the big stumbling block is uh, really, I mean, we've got a way to pay for this. We've got a good design. Uh, we've got somebody that seems to be willing to help us with Union, uh, at Union Pacific. It is um, what rent that uh, Union Pacific is going to be charging us for using their property. Now, one would think since we're picking up the cost of this trail and the improvements and we're reducing UP's liability that they would want to help, um, but they're, you know, they're, they've got a reputation of saving money wherever they possibly can. And so um, uh, while I'm working for a dollar a year lease, I, I've heard that they're going to try, um, the, at least the real estate department is going to try to charge us more. And uh, so I spent, you know, I've been trying to get through to Congressman LaMalfa's office and finally had some success. Spoke to a rep over there for about an hour, hour and a half today and explained that we've got everything in place. We just need somebody to talk to the um, uh, CEO in DC or one of his representatives, this guy named Lance Fritz and see if uh, we can get some pressure from above to say, even though we're a tiny city and it's a tiny project, just um, it's in our best interest to sign a lease that makes sense for the city because we're really picking up the rest of the work. Who knows if this is going to go anywhere, but I seem to have a sympathetic voice on, on um, the federal end and at the UPN, so I'm hoping that we can move this forward. Anyway, long story short, that's where we're at. we are. Thank you. Uh, Finance Director Blake, is there anything to report at this time? Uh, nothing big. I did just want to say that uh, the water project uh, bids came in. We'll have a recommendation for council next week, but um, the bids came in. They look good. And so it's looking uh, exciting uh, to move forward with our, our big, uh, you know, $10 million projects for the water. Uh, well, going with the public comment earlier, could you just spend a brief moment explaining what the project is? Uh, sure. It's uh, mainly water pipe replacement. We're also doing water meters. Um, and it's a full uh, replacement. We're getting on brand new, you know, brand new everything. And uh, um, about what a was the life of the, the new plan compared to that of the old, the life expectancy? 
Well, it's replacing all these old lines. That are, you know, we've got roots growing through. It's the downtown water tank project. It's really doing um, as much as we can with uh, the grant and um, and low uh, interest loans that we've gotten from USDA um, water. And um, we're gonna, gonna be able to do a significant amount of the city uh, um, of replacing pipes in the city. And with uh, what Blake mentioned with the bid opening, the bid openings opening, uh, the amount that came in was substantially lower than we expected, uh, you know, and uh, substantially low. And with that extra money, we were able to do additional work. All right, so, thank you so much. I really appreciate the, that update. Um, this is kind of slowly coming to the full fruition of the rate hikes that began over five years ago to deal with uh, the majority of our water uh, main replacements. Here, Brian. Yes. Could I ask a question or make a point on this, please? Uh, if it's brief. Very brief. I just want to point out that um, the water uh, tower project is something that was required because of the water pressure in our city. And it was determined that unless we get this new tank in place, in a case of a severe situation overload of the water system, as you would have in a fire, that we may not have enough pressure. So getting this is not just a nice thing to have for the taste of the water and the health of the water. It also can be a big boon for us as a safety measure for our city. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I believe we have... Um, Council, we have... Uh, Council Member Brian, we do have a um, comment from... Oh city yes, our city uh, planner, Richard Simpson. All right, thank you. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. yes. Yeah. Great. Great. So I just wanted to, uh, I, I don't know if the council's heard yet. I haven't been at every meeting, so I apologize if this information is redundant. I just want to let the council know that on, I believe it was uh, August 27th, maybe, uh, the council approved a change to the SBP project description, which is the grant that we uh, received to do a number of things in the city, including updating the city's general plan housing law. Uh, but uh, on the 27th, we looked at uh, sort of restacking projects so that we can actually do a comprehensive zoning code update, which is significant for the city. I just want to let you know that on September 14th, uh, that change to the project description was approved by the Department of Housing and Community Development. So uh, in the coming months, we will be working on a comprehensive update to the city's zoning code to make things easier for staff and the public to use. That's it. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, quick question. Did this change the amount we were getting awarded because it's a no, larger no, undertaking? We just uh, realigned the budget. Okay. Thank you. Are there any further questions for our city planner? Um, I, I have one. Just will there be an opportunity for the public to have input or at least receive information on uh, what we're hoping to achieve with this comprehensive zoning update? Oh, absolutely. There will be workshops. There will be public hearings, 100%. And, and we're not going to do anything dramatic. You know, we're not going to do anything radical here. Uh, we don't have a lot of money to do something radical here. Uh, largely, what we're doing is just addressing existing problems that we're aware of, uh, mm -hmm. leaving people's entitlements alone, um, and trying to address some of the things that the council has attempted to do in the past, but because of procedural errors in the way that they're implemented, uh, we haven't been able to implement them yet. So it's really just a matter of, it's a, it's a cleanup and a modernization of the zoning code, but absolutely, there'll be uh, workshops, there'll be uh, public hearings before the planning commission and public hearings for the city council. Thank you so much. All right, um, Ben, I believe you're uh, on the line. Sergeant Wettstein. Yeah, good evening, can everybody hear me all right? Yes. Yes. All right, sorry, I've already dropped signal once, so <laughs> hope I can get through this. So I was going to give an abridged uh, report on the August statistics. It was kind of a busy month, so there was a, a lot of material. But we had a little over 500 hours of patrol time. Uh, we had 264 calls for service. Uh, took 30 case numbers, did about 29 uh, traffic stops, 15 citations, had 16 arrests. Uh, there were... Uh, eight felony bookings and uh, 18 misdemeanor bookings. Um, as far as the details for the arrests, it's kind of the same as usual. There's a lot of stuff here, but we had two methamphetamine related arrests for a few grams of uh, being in possession of a few grams. 
Um, no burglaries for the month of August. We had 10 thefts. Uh, no assault and batteries or domestic disturbances, one vandalism, 19 school checks, and 24 disturbing and peace calls. Uh, other than that, as everybody knows, we got a new sheriff appointed, Jeremiah LaRue. We're expecting uh, good things, but we are in a big uh, transition period and a big shakeup is going on within the department. I don't see this as messing at all with the continuity of services for the Dunsmuir. Uh, they will continue to remain a, uh, Dunsmuir will continue to remain a priority with this administration, I'm sure. But uh, other than that, it's business as usual. Thank you, Sergeant Weinstein. Um, could you please, um, when you meet with the new sheriff, uh, convey our intention to meet him in person uh, at an upcoming meeting when he has availability? I absolutely will. Are there any questions for Sergeant Weinstein at this time from council? Thank you, Sergeant. Um, we appreciate the good work. Thank you. All right, um, Fire Chief is on the line, but I believe we'll um, have that agendized topic come up later in due course. Um, I'll move on to council comments. Uh, Big Dave, would you like to start us off? No, I, I'm not in town. I, <clears throat> I haven't seen the paper. I haven't seen a lot of things. I, I'm, uh, I'm enjoying a couple of days off. But uh, I appreciate everybody's hard work in City Hall that they've been doing. And I'm curious to see what the fire chief has to say later on in the meeting. But thank you. Thank you, Councilman Kaiser. Um, Councilman Art? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I did want to say that in terms of the printed agenda that we operate off of, we are missing an item at the front end of the meeting that's called approval of the agenda. And if you look at the protocols, it's supposed to be there. The reason I raise it is that Mayor Lucchese and the city manager reached out to me last week and we had a pre-agenda meeting that went for an hour. I truly appreciated it. And I'm very happy with today's agenda. To Tim Holt, we spent a lot of time talking about the historic district and getting our message out to the people we try to serve as far as keeping the community safe and financially strong. But I really think it's a big step forward, even with the pandemic, to go back to strengthening both our agenda process and public participation in it. So good on everybody for that. My second comment is to thank uh, the mayor for the very well-written opinion that she submitted to the Dunsmuir News for the newspaper yesterday, September 30th, with the notion, yes, everybody has First Amendment rights to criticize the city and criticize city councilors, but at the end of the day, facts matter and the truth matters. And I think Mayor Lucchese, in her fairly concise guest opinion that the record should be corrected, did all of us a service. So thank you, Juliana, for that. And the last is coming home from Mount Shasta this afternoon. I drove by engine 1727 by the community center and somebody has completely prepped this beautiful piece of engineering and put it into gray primer. And I'm very excited that that is a marker for what lays ahead for the city of Dunsmuir. Thank you. Excuse me. Councilman Deutsch. Yeah, thank you, sir, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I wanna follow up on a couple of things. Uh, Councilman Arth just mentioned 1727. Um, I know that Cheryl Petty right now is wanting to reach out to the businesses. She's looking for money to help support that project. 
And so um, if anybody out there wants to jump on board, figuratively speaking, um, engine 1727, uh, reach out to Cheryl Petty. She'll be glad to hear from you. Uh, another thing I wanted to bring up was the uh, mention of the rates. I appreciate uh, Tim Holt's uh, suggestion. To me, the most important thing is very, very simple. Until we got our rates up to a certain point, the federal government and the state governments were not going to give us those grants and low interest loans. We were required by the federal government to have our rates at a certain place. We took five years to get it there in order to keep the pain from being all of a sudden. But the one thing we can point to right now is that all the work that's going to be done on the uh, main lines and also on the tanks and everything else is going to be because of the pain that everyone has put themselves through. That's what it was all about coming at the other end. Uh, next, I wanted to uh, mention um, the uh, LTC. Right now, the Local Transportation Commission has authorized uh, free rides throughout the county on any on any ride anywhere. So the word is kind of not getting out there right now. If you would help spread the word, particularly to those people who often use the bus, realize that from now for the foreseeable future, you'll be able to ride for free. And with that in mind, I wanted to give an update. I'm not sure if everyone has heard of this, but from the first time I was appointed to the Local Transportation Commission, I have been working on a particular vision that I have, which is to transform the way the uh, interstate corridor cities operate their bus services. And what I've wanted to do all along, and we're now in the process of actually drawing up the new service because the, uh, I, I've been able to get the whole commission to be on board with this idea, and that is that we will have a bus route that will run all day long just up and down Dunsmere. And that bus route will be able to pick up people and carry them back and forth. And they'll be able to do that then. And so they want to get on to go to Wairika. There'll be a single transfer point with a express bus that will be riding up and down the interstate, stopping at only one place in each city. So that's something we're working on right now. And they'll be coming up with a plan. And I'm really excited about it. I think it'll bring a whole lot to our community and our city to be able to have people to move about freely at any time. Uh, the last thing I want to say is simply that um, COVID is still here. There are places like Wisconsin right now, which is dear to my heart, and obviously to uh, Mayor Luke Casey's heart, is having a huge surge right now. And that's not in the um, that's not in the metropolitan areas. So I hope everyone continues their vigilance. I want us to continue to get through safely. And that's all I have, uh, Chair. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councilman Deutsch. I myself would just like to remind everyone uh, during this election season, as tempers start to flare and um, accusations come out, that um, facts do indeed matter. Um, staying educated matters. I realize it takes a lot of time to check a budget of the city yourself um, and to call and ask questions. But if you hear something, don't assume that it's correct. Um, you're more than welcome to join any and all of our public meetings or contact City Hall at any time uh, with a question. I do encourage you to stay informed, stay involved. Um, you can make whatever decision you'd like to, um, clearly at the ballot box, but uh, I would encourage everyone to educate themselves on the decisions they're making. Um, and that's all for my public comment for this evening. Um, I'd like to move us forward to the approval of the minutes for the September 17th meeting, 2020. I make a motion to Go ahead. I make the motion to approve the minutes from September 17, 2020. I'll be that second. All right. Um, motion and a second. Um, roll call vote. Councilman Arthur. Yeah. Aye. Councilman Kaiser. Aye. Councilman Deutsch. Aye. Where the case is absent and myself is an aye. Motion carries four, one abstaining. Um, let's move forward to the consent agenda. Um, going forth with uh, Councilman Arth's question, is everyone okay with the consent agenda as it stands? I am, and I'm prepared to make a motion. All right. Um, make a motion then. I make a motion to adopt the consent agenda as stands. All right. And for everyone's information here, the consent agenda consists of our check register from uh, 9-12 to 9-25, 2020, 
public safety funds, COPS grant, and annual amendment. Um, just to, to clarify this, this is actually um, quite good news. It's uh, every year due to some funding changes, um, sources in the early 90s from the state, uh, we get reimbursed a certain amount for our law enforcement expenses uh, from the state through the county. And we never know what the exact amount will be till we're in the fiscal year. Um, and we budgeted for 125,000 because we knew we were guaranteed 100,000 and it came in at 156,000. So, Yay! so our, our deficit of 54,000 was just reduced by 31,000. Um, <laughs> well done, yay. Rounded. Well um, done. That being said, you know, we are in a tumultuous time with sure. COVID and it would be very difficult to sustain another shutdown. Uh, but just so everyone knows, that's an important fact on the consent agenda. The next one is public safety funds maintenance of effort annual certification. This is the certification that goes along with receiving those funds. All right, um, was there a second to Councilman Keisler's motion? Peter, would you like to? I thought you did, but I'm happy to. Okay. All right, uh, motion and a second. Councilman Arth? Aye. Councilman Keisler? Aye. Councilman Deutsch? Aye. Mayor really Casey's absent, myself is an aye. move forward to item nine, our public hearing. We do have, um, I believe, a second public, second reading public hearing. Vice Mayor I, Brian, Vice yes? Mayor Brian, I believe we skipped over committee reports and Brian Shirley of DPAC is here to give an update. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have that slide. All right. Uh, yes, sorry. Yeah, hello. This is Brian Shirley, DPAC. Uh, item agenda six, committee reports. The DPAC has to report that uh, the COVID situation in the county seems stable. We have 166 confirmed cases, two that are active, 164 recovered, zero deaths. Compared to the state average of 810,625 confirmed cases, 15,792 deaths. In the county alone, we've done 8,822 tests. We've had 8,601 negatives. We have 55 currently awaiting results and zero patients in the current acute facilities of the hospital. The patient mix has been 56% 50, male, 44% female, and a majority of the cases have been in the age group of 18 to 49. Most of the cases have come from exposure to direct exposure of people. And in the East County, there's been 34% of the county cases. And in our area of the South County, we currently have had 31% of the cases. As we compare those numbers to Shasta County, which has had 943 cases, Humboldt County, which has had 512, Jackson County of Medford, Nashland, 1,190. Klamath Falls, 290. We're seeing a faster test turnaround time. We're seeing great case management so that the patients all seem to be recovering with little care. We're seeing good increased infection control standards and plenty of current PPE and ventilators available for the South County. <laughs> As far as the DPAC, uh, green waste events are coming up to be coordinated with the county. And we also have our newsletter and links going out for public education. So the DPAC committee seems to be active in making a difference and continues its efforts. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Shirley. I, I apologize for skipping over the reports. I did not mean to. Uh, we, we greatly appreciate uh, your report. But on COVID, it's, it's very refreshing to get the actual data. We appreciate it. Are there any questions, um, Councilman? I do. Uh, Mr. Shirley, um, a question I have is, we were talking um, with the Dunsmuir Community Care Team um, about the work that they've been doing, um, putting out the uh, um, disaster preparedness briefings so that people get a, a sense of that. But up until now, that has been done, and for good reason, um, among small people who can't otherwise maybe get access to this, small groups of people, et cetera. We were wondering whether it might be useful um, 
to put together some sort of um, what could turn out to be an annual event, but for right now, some sort of a program that would take that information and get it out in a public way to the public so that they're all tuned into what they need to do to be prepared. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Um, you know, my feeling about disaster preparedness is it's everybody's job and it's nobody has ownership on it. So every single person that's making an effort, it's greatly appreciated. So the 211 program that's going on with the community center, public education, we're ramping up our newsletter. Every single effort that we can do is making a difference. And I want to be involved with all of it. We want to definitely encourage it. And, uh, you know, one other thing, sir, that came up was uh, public education for uh, mask usage. And if you, and I'm sure you're all aware is the feds, uh, we did it at a federal level, a state level, a county level. Um, we totally attacked that for about the last three weeks. So if you don't know to wear a mask at this point, you're not listening and you don't really care. So uh, I feel like those efforts are going great and everything we can do to encourage anybody to do the right things, social distance, hand washing, mask usage, disaster preparedness, everything we can do is of great benefit for the community. I'll be getting back to you, thanks. Thank you, any uh, further questions? Uh, looks like council member Arth would like to speak. Go ahead. Well, it's simply to thank chairman Shirley and his committee as a resident and a business owner I feel safer because of the efforts of this committee. And I'm hoping that you're able to continue with tonight's meeting. So you have comments on the local hazard mitigation plan and even more importantly, item 11B, when we talk with Chief Padilla about fire safety and needed resources, the hope that whether we have a fire safe council or not, you and your committee members will work with our fire chief and our city manager and that the city council will budget the resources you need over the next 24 months, vegetation management, free cleanup days, everything we can think of to keep our community safe. But thank you so much for your service. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. All right, are there any uh, more questions? See none, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Shirley, for that report, and thank you for the good work in the DPAC committee. You're welcome, sir. Hello. All right, uh, are there any other committees uh, that met during this time while we're on the subject? Council meeting. Councilman Arth? All right, seeing none, let's move forward back onto item nine, public hearing, our local hazard mitigation plan. Um, City Manager Uhas, would you like to introduce the public hearing? Sure, um, it's uh, regarding the local hazard mitigation plan. Actually, uh, my planner Rico Tinsman is gonna walk us through. Excellent. All right, everyone ready? Yes, yeah, sir. All right, that's it. Turn your volume up. It's a little echoey and quiet. Uh, how's this? Uh, better, thank you. Okay, so the Siskiyou County Multi-Jurisdictional Local Hazard Mitigation Plan, draft City of Dunsmore Annex, and proposed safety element amendment were all previously presented to the City Council at a public hearing on August 6, 2020. Following the Council's review of the project at the public hearing, the Council directed staff to submit the project to Cal OES and FEMA for review and to bring the project back to the council for further consideration and adoption once an approved pending adoption letter had been received from FEMA. Both Cal OES and FEMA have since reviewed the project and on separate September 24th, staff was informed in a conference call with the two agencies that the city's draft annex met the requirements of the Disaster Mitigation Act of 2000 and that once adopted by the city, FEMA would be issuing an approval letter to the city. In other words, FEMA is aware that, that adoption may very well occur tonight and as a result, it's holding off on issuing an approved pending letter, uh, approved pending adoption letter in favor of issuing an approved letter. Um, as in the SAC report, Cal OAS's formal review of 
for AB 2140 compliance occurs after the city adopts the LHMP into its safety element. Staff recently went through this process with Cal OES and two other cities, and Cal OES has already informally reviewed the city's draft annex and proposed general plan amendment. Based upon discussions with Cal OES, it's anticipated that the city will have no difficulty very quickly obtaining AB 2140 compliance. Moreover, once the project is adopted by the city and approved by FEMA and Cal OES, the city will be eligible for federal disaster mitigation assistance, California disaster assistance, and has a mitigation grants to hopefully prevent and or mitigate disasters. With regard to the California Environmental Quality Act, staff is recommending the project is exempt from environmental review pursuant to section 15061B3 of the CEQA guidelines. 15061B3 is better known as the common sense exemption because it states that CEQA only applies to projects with the potential to adversely impact the environment. Accordingly, a finding to this effect has been incorporated in the draft resolution prepared for the council's consideration. To, drop the draft, to adopt the draft resolution and project following tonight's public hearing, a suggested motion is provided for the council's consideration on page two of the staff report. <laughs> any questions for staff? Yes, Councilman, is there any questions at this time? No, sir. Right. <clears throat> Seeing none, thank you, City Planner Tinsman. We appreciate that report. Seeing no further questions of staff, I will now open the public hearing. Uh, anyone wishing to make a public comment on this local hazard mitigation plan public hearing um, can raise their hand or press star nine if they're calling in, um, and that'll serve the same function. So if you go to the participants tab, at the bottom on the right, there's a raise your hand button, which you can press. All right, uh, seeing no public comment, I will now officially close this public hearing. Um, so I, I have a point of order question. Are we able to adopt it at this point now that it's had its second reading? Yes, uh, in fact, uh, this is a resolution, so it doesn't need two readings. The two readings really, the initial one was just for the council's uh, Re review, initial review and consideration. And then once we knew that the council was happy with it, uh, we were looking to the council to the direct staff to submit it, to have uh, direct staff to submit to the state for review and the federal government, which has now occurred. So now at this point, we are uh, really ready to just adopt it and uh, gain uh, FEMA and state coverage in case the city burns up. All right, um, gentlemen, are there any, uh, any discussion on the topic? I'm ready with the motion if anyone else wants to talk, doesn't want to talk. I proceed with your motion, Councilman Deutsch. Thank you, sir. I move that we make the finding that the proposed project would not have a significant adverse effect on the environment, that we adopt the recommended CEQA exemption, and that we adopt resolution 202012, approving the general plan amendment and adopting the Siskiyou County multi-jurisdictional local hazard mitigation plan, including city of Dunsmuir Annex as the official hazard mitigation plan of the city. Thank you. Is there a motion? Uh, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Council Member Arth. Um, any discussion of the motion at hand? Well, having seconded the motion, I want to thank everybody that brought this to fruition. I was not one of those that needed to go down to paradise to see what a catastrophic fire could do to a small community but the most important thing is recovery and I know the mayor assured us from the outset that in the end FEMA would cover it. Councilman Arth? I believe you muted yourself. Okay. Can you hear me? We're good. So I, you know, can, the can citizens, you hear me? yeah, the citizens and the businesses of Dunsmuir will probably never appreciate all of the work of the DPAC and our city planner and our city manager and others, but they should go to sleep tonight more comfortably knowing if the worst happens 
the federal government and the state government and the county will be willing and able to help all of those in distress, whatever the cause is. So I just am very grateful to the work the city has done in this area. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilman Kaiser, do you have any discussion or comments? Can you hear me? Yes. Well, Rob, because for a long time it got muted and I didn't hear anything. And then I tried to hear say something and nobody's responding, but now all of a sudden I'm back. So I'm okay now. We're, we're, we're glad you're back. All right. Um, and I myself just want to echo um, the motions of gratitude for all the people who brought this, this project to full fruition. Uh, Mr. Thank Mayor? You. Yes? Yeah, if I could add one other thing, um, one name that probably um, among all the many, like Rico and everybody else that has worked in this, I want to make sure gets in this. I know Arlene did just did a lot of work and she's no longer on that particular task, but I just want to thank her for her effort too. All right, thank you for that inclusion. All right, uh, Councilman Arth, how do you vote? I vote uh, enthusiastic aye with gratitude. Right. Councilman Keisler. Aye. Councilman Deutsch. Aye. Um, myself is an aye, uh, with the mayor being absent, carries four, zero, one. Thank you all. All right, thank, thank you, you, city planner. Thank you, Rico. All right, um, move forward through item 10, old business. We have no old business, to item 11, new business. And we'll begin with discussion with Hunter Cable about providing fiber to Dunsmere. And I believe we have a representative uh, from Hunter Cable on the line, but um, City Manager Uhas, would you like to introduce the subject? Yeah, um, so if you may recall, if you were on the last City Council meeting, uh, I mentioned that Hunter, Commun uh, Hunter Communications and I had a um, discussion. They are putting in a fiber node near the uh, airport and um, we met and talked about the potential for bringing fiber into the city. And uh, we just uh, don't really have an idea what kind of appetite there is given that uh, you know, we need an economy that we can um, bring the cost of fiber down. But on the other hand, if, we can, if we've got enough people that are willing to participate uh, in bringing fiber into the city, uh, having, having fast internet is, is uh, certainly one way that we're gonna be able to create economic development because people that are willing to work remotely um, that have their large salaries from, from uh, San Francisco or uh, from Sacramento, uh, aren't going to come um, to Dunsmuir if they are working on dial-up speed. So uh, Andy Hackett and uh, Jeff Wilsey from Hunter Communications have agreed to um, uh, to turn the Zoom and fill us in a little bit about what their thinking is and um, how to proceed. All right, thank you. Beautiful. Thanks, Todd. Uh, my name is Jeff Wilsey, and my colleague Andy Hackett is here as well. And yes, we've got an expansion uh, idea to expand our fiber network into uh, the city and surrounding areas of Dunsmuir. Um, we currently have our closest splice point of fiber is up at your um, Dunsmuir Municipal Mott Airport. Um, and we're working with some, uh, we need to talk about the airport as well. And we're working with some local residents along Mott Airport Road uh, to see if we can't facilitate uh, providing internet and telephone services as well um, to that area and then work our way down to the city. And um, so that's really what tonight's about. It's just, it, we are in the evaluation uh, mode of determining uh, the viability of building this out. Our goal, as with all um, of our expansion um, throughout the region, which includes Southern Oregon, where we're based, and uh, down into uh, Northern California, which includes obviously Siskiyou County. Um, we're looking into Modoc County. We're moving into Eureka um, as well. Um, is to hit every home and every business. We want to, if we're going to come, we're going to put our fiber into, into every establishment we can. So I understand there's approximately 1,300, 1,350 homes that we might be able to get to, plus um, businesses, municipalities, schools, police, fire, 
all of that is kind of our forte. Um, so we're really looking for the leadership of the city council to help uh, direct us um, into the best ways to make this happen. We want to come down, um, and it looks like we're at least our initial evaluation has us establishing a couple of cabinets within town, maybe one north, one south, so that we can then spider web off of that um, to facilitate, you know, a, a more homogeneous way of getting fiber distributed to everyone. Um, and we're looking for your comments tonight. You know, I want to get comments from the council and see how we can't start moving this, this ball forward. Thank you so much, Mr. Wilson. Um, Councilman, are there any questions? I do. I do. All right. I assume we, we all have a great many questions. Um, <laughs> is your uh, counterpart, I believe he's muted still. If we could unmute him so he can uh, speak if you'd like to as well. Come on in, Andy. Okay. I'm trying I'm here. <laughs> Seems like I got to hold this space bar. Is there any? Okay. All right. Well, we'll hope. <laughs> You can join us, um, Andy, in the future. I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, well, I'd just like to say, uh, to begin the responses and questions, um, our city is deeply interested in what you're offering, and um, we would look forward to a partnership. Um, we definitely need this. It's an important component to future growth or even just maintain prosperity uh, in the age in which we live. So um, I, I'm incredibly grateful that we're having this conversation right now. But uh, Councilman Arth, would you like to begin? Uh, I would be happy to. And I served on the city council about 10 years ago. And coming from a career at the California Public Utilities Commission, I was well versed in the issue of the digital divide. Uh, for the state of California, who is going to get broadband and be on the right side of the digital divide, and especially for rural communities in the North State, whether it's schools or businesses or residences, who's going to be left behind? And the three cities of Weed and Mount Shasta and Dunsmuir invested about $100,000 in a feasibility study and the bottom line was not feasible. You're too small. You don't generate enough revenue. Uh, whatever particular benefits you see from the fiber optic cable buried by the tracks, that's not going to be enough to get it done. So my question is, what is the architecture you foresee for a small city like Dunsmuir that will make it cost effective? And secondly, do you favor the competitive approach or would you like a franchise? Thank you. Um, now, when you're talking about franchise, we usually end up doing, you know, standard franchise agreements with municipalities, but uh, I think typically we prefer the competitive approach. Um, unless, what's your, de what's your definition? Well, my, my concern is ever since I moved up here 12 years ago, task force after task force, AT&T and Verizon are not particularly interested in the opportunities up here. No, they're not. And so we have a dominant cable carrier. We have a couple of very small providers like Snowcrest, right. but I have not followed the evolution of getting to broadband in the last five to 10 years and what the future looks like to meet the aspirations of the people we're serving. Okay. Well, um, just a, a quick overview. Um, companies like us, we're small, uh, privately held company. We're based in Central Point, Medford, Oregon. We've got facilities um, distributed through the Rogue Valley over the hill into Klamath Falls out to Lake County. And we provide service to, to uh, the municipalities 
and the county school districts and city school districts, police and fire, uh, 911 services in all those communities. Um, the school districts, we, um, it was very interesting, obviously, during COVID that we've all had to uh, jump through a lot of hoops and hustle it up to, to try and facilitate the requirement that hit us all this last March and April. Um, but given that, you know, our core business was what we call enterprise for quite some time in our, in our history, and that's what established us in the region as, as frankly now uh, the, the top fiber provider in the region. Um, but with that, we've seen the need to expand and we've really seen it in the last six and eight months. And how, how does a group like us get distributed into, you know, we make these bold statements, you know, every, every home in town, you know, every house in our, in our, in our footprint, but that's our goal. And of course that puts us in a position to directly compete against local providers. Now the DSL providers, the AT&Ts and the Snowcrests, they're just not able to deliver right now. Um, where we can come in with direct fiber lines um, in and distribute into homes and then it's, uh, you know, it's just a volume game at that point. You know, if, if I hit 1300 homes, I can, I can sell a hundred megabit service in Dunsmuir for the same price I sell it in Medford or Klamath Falls. You know, so now all of a sudden um, I'm beyond competitive because I'm selling, you know, my 100 meg minimums at, at or, you know, slightly above what you're going to get, you know, not even a 10 meg circuit from a, a Snowcrest or someone. So anyways, it just makes sense now, you know, it's a volume game, and it gets and it gets our network stretched as well. You know, we're, we we came in obviously um, into Wairika. We're in Weed. We've got uh, a facility now in Mount Shasta, and um, so we're positioned to to bring that right down into Dunsmuir. It's just that last few miles. You know, it's a it's a bit of a hectic run down to you guys. So it's uh, you know there's expense. What is your what is your pipeline? What pipeline are you using? What do you mean pipeline? To haul the traffic. It's, it's fiber. Okay. I believe he'd be um, laying his own, is my understanding. Is that correct? Say again? You would be laying your own fiber lines? Oh, yes. It, yeah. yeah. It's hunter fiber end to end. Point to point, it's hunter fiber. There is no least fiber in this circuit at all. We don't lease from, from any of the tier ones, from AT&T or anybody else. It's Hunter Thank Fiber you. from our head end to your front door. Thank you. And, and just one last question. In yes. terms of, I mean, I think the federal government and state of California understand this is a social problem that no one should be left behind do you dial in federal and state supports to make all of this work or do you do it just on your own? It's completely on our own. We are not uh, uh, an, an incumbent local exchange carrier. We're a competitive local exchange carrier, which means we are not subsidized. We're still regulated because we are a, tel a telco as well. We have our own MetaSwitch. We provide our own telephone services and we're an ISP, so we provide our, our own backbone for internet. Um, but no, we are not subsidized at all. Um, this is, we're an S Corp and we're competing in the marketplace like everybody else. So, you know, so I, the, need rev, I need revenue at the end of the stream. Thank you, know? you so much. I see that our city manager has his hand raised. Uh, Go so ahead. Yeah, Jeff, just really quick, um, you know, I think that I think what might help council and everybody else listening is uh, how would you go about prospecting in town to understand whether you've got the volume that you need to make it worth your Right. Um, we've got a couple of ways we do it. I mean, we come down the old fashioned way. We, we knock on doors, which is a little bit of a, a dicey situation for everybody right now. So we've got letters that we send out and certainly we'll come to you guys for help 
of how what might be a, a most efficient way to distribute information to the community now because knocking physically knocking on doors probably isn't the smartest thing right now. Um, we, we do the old door hangers. We send out letters of our intent, you know, that we, we, we look to get um, responses back from people, you know, th that, that if we come, you know, are you interested kind of thing. And, and we also want to find ways to find out the need you know, I'm especially the last couple of years with the and there's a huge migration up here. I mean, I'm out of the Klamath office and Andy's out of the Medford office and I live rural east of Klamath, actually. And but I cover the Mount Shasta and, and your area. And there's a huge influx, as you all know, of people from the Bay Area and Los Angeles and everywhere. Um, but these people are coming up to work. You know, they're getting out of that turmoil and they're they're buying a house in in the in the pine trees, but they're still getting up and working every day in the bedroom. Then they need they need an internet connectivity. So it's it's imperative for us to identify that. You know who are the users and what are their needs? Um, because we can deliver it now. We can literally bring that high speed. It's a gigabit network. So I can you know I can bring the guy that needs a gig to his house. And then the, the other, you know, my mom, who, who really doesn't need anything, but, you know, I'll bring her 100 megs so she can Skype with my, with my kids, you know. And so we, we've got the whole gamut now um, deliverable to, to, rural, to rural Northern California, Southern Oregon. Can I talk now? Go ahead, Councilman. Yes. Uh, I wanted to uh, follow up on what Mr. R said. Mr. R gave a couple of paragraph summary of what was a two year project. And I was the member that represented Dunsmuir on that project where we hired uh, one of the top people out of Washington DC to come in and do all the analysis. The first thing I'd like to say is, is that I desperately want to get fiber here. But with that said, it makes sense, I believe, that whatever you do in terms of trying to gather information and trying to get a sense of what we have going, is to look at the work that has been done already in terms of all that data that you might want. It's out there, we bought it, and so it's available. The other thing is, is that when you look at it, what we came up with was that the fact that uh, Northland, which has now been bought by Wive, um, is able to provide 100 megabits right now. And again, I, I would like to have the full gig. Um, I'm the type of person who would use it. But at the same time, right now, with that competitor, that, that competitor out there, we were kind of lost at how we could find a way to strategically move into an environment where there was enough hand uh, support on one hand for buying it, and then it, we weren't going to be locked into some kind of a battle. So my point is, is that um, the, the effort that was done, um, if you're working already with Mount Shasta and uh, with Weed, we could all kind of benefit from whatever gets done going forward. I know that uh, Juliana, our mayor, when she was working with that group, had had a survey that she wanted to do, which would go out to all the different citizens in the area and find out exactly what their needs might be. So you might be able to find some support from the city in doing that. But again, the idea to me is, is that we've already learned a whole lot about what the data is, what the people are. Uh, and I think that the best thing to do at this point is to take a hard look at that and build off of it rather than just assume you're gonna start over. So that's my comment. Well, we certainly would appreciate that if you're willing to share that information. Oh yeah. Yeah. You bet. Um, we're in because, um, I mean, we're bringing direct internet access. So um, you'll get what you pay for with us is one thing too. So, but we can, we can make it fit the need of each individual user, like you said. Yeah. All right. Thank you. The nice thing is, is the heavy lifting has been done almost most of the way down here. So, you know, the cost isn't, isn't as high as if you were having to bring it from say Redding or, Well, the trouble is Northland actually had a has a drop in the city. Northland can actually get fiber up off of the uh, the railroad run there. Um, and uh, so there was fiber in the city to a couple of companies at one point. I don't believe there are any more. But so there is some fiber in town. Again, it's looking at the model of how much it would cost and how you parse it all out over time. Well, thank you, Councilman uh, Deutsch. Councilman Kaiser, do you have any questions? 
No, I'm just, I'm really anxious and can't wait for this. All right. I, um, yeah, I, I have a, a couple of questions, um, but I'm most interested in hearing your questions because you guys are the ones on the fact-finding mission. Um, we would love for you guys to participate and bring this great service to our to our town. But uh, I guess to start off, what percentage of, say, that 1,300 homes would you need to anticipate having sign up in the first year um, to have this be considered a go-ahead, um, just generally speaking? Well, in general, uh, we look at it as a, as a combination. I need to get a good sense of, of the business in town, small business. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if there's any enterprise business working, you know, that, that connectivity might ramp their abilities up to the next level. And of course, uh, the municipality, police, fire, schools. I'm very curious to find out how the, how the schools are connected right now. Mm -hmm. um, we do a lot of school districts, and so we're well versed in the needs of, of those enterprises. So th that's, those are the questions I have. What, you know, there's, there's the residential side for us. There's the small business side. There's the enterprise side, if, if any exists. <laughs> Or, or can be um, developed, and then, then infrastructure, police, fire, and all that. So those are the questions I have. Thank you. Um, I think that there's probably a great deal of interest uh, when it comes to the bigger institutions in town. Um, you could reach out to uh, Ray Keller, our superintendent of Dunsmuir School District. Um, if you need an introduction, I get in touch with city manager. He'd be happy to uh, uh, refer you to them. Um, when it comes to, say, my experience with demand, I'm a realtor, kind of in the South County area altogether, and so this, this comes up quite a bit. And, uh, you know, what I mostly observe is that th there really is a divide. Some people, it's absolutely essential. You know, it's it's the number one factor in buying a home or not buying a home. For others, it's, it's not important to their lifestyle. Exactly. Um, you know, what we have is fine enough. Um, but what I'm generally seeing um, is that you may not have, like, I, I don't know, honestly, if you'd get more than 10% initially to sign up for it. But when the time comes, as each new person, new customer living here researches their options, I think you would increasingly gain business and it'd be pretty up, pretty straight uphill climb if you were available. So I, I guess I'd say generally speaking, I think there's, um, there's a solid demand, um, but it's, it's increasing and we are going to hit 100% demand of our population at some point, and I don't think it's going to be in 25 years. It's no, probably going to be sometime five to 10 years. And it'll and it'll be quicker than that. I found in in the investigations I've done, I was very surprised. Um, even two years ago, when we started um, a, a push up in Hammond Ranch, um, we the the whole him weed Mount Shasta where it crosses the tracks there. Yeah, up, and up uh, huh, excuse me, off the old stage corridor. Correct, exactly, old stage road, and um, and 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 I was actually approached in in the street by a business owner. Um, I had parked my car with, that has logos all over it, you know. And, and he says, you're the fiber guy. And uh, yeah, and anyways, it started the conversation. And guess what? I've got 30 homes that we've hooked up in his neighborhood off of Old Stage Road. Um, but it was, it was a little bit slow going because like in, in any endeavor, you know, who's, who's Jeff, who's Hunter, right? You got to, you know, you have to build trust and, and I can tell you how great everything is, but what does that mean until you see it? So Yes, you're going to have to go through that process, but I'll tell you right now, I'm, I'm working on a, on, on a, with a homeowner, and um, he wants to buy a house up in Mount Shasta, but he's coming up from Frisco in this, in this new migration, and he's a video producer, and guess what? He's not buying the house if my fiber's not in it, because he needs the bandwidth. Mm -hmm. so, so we're finding this Anyway, my point being is that the ramp up is, is, is a much more vertical now I'm seeing specifically since the first of the year in what people want and they know what they want more now than they did even two years ago. I so, think the, the case in point is we're holding this meeting on Zoom. Correct. 
Hello. I mean, I've been working from, I converted this bedroom into my office. I've been in here for six, eight months. I mean, we've, we've all done it, you know? So um, I think I lost track of, of the original question, but uh, the point being that, um, yes, we're very um, in tune and sensitive to, to that development and that there are people that won't understand it. But I will say too, that I'm finding um, people don't know what they don't know yet either, because, you know, the way Office 365 is converting now, the way Google is, you know, you just, you're not getting online with that, with dial up anymore. And, and next year it'll even be uh, a slower process. So, um, with, you know, people will understand it. And if we're in town, yes, we understand that, you know, it's going to take it's going to take 18 to 24 months to really get the drive going but it happens quicker than than you would think thank you um i agree with that um, i think that there would be um sustained interest and it would grow definitely um as to enterprises or say like hosting online businesses here there there isn't a lot of that in town right now but i i would point out you know i'm, I'm from a younger generation than most of the people participating in this meeting that there's a lot of people that are exploring opportunities for hosting online businesses and that they heretofore have not been able to consider our town a place exactly. to live. And, and I'm not talking just about migration of people from San Francisco up to Dunsmere, but our Dunsmere high schoolers who are mm -hmm. always going to be the most attuned to new technology. <laughs> you bet. They may be able to found a successful business and form a mm -hmm. career without leaving our town if they don't choose to. And um, exactly. that, that'd be, something that I think would uh, benefit your company and our town simultaneously. It's very true. We deal with it here in Klamath. We've got Oregon Tech right here in, in, in town, and we don't hold on to students, you know, and uh, all communities are trying to do that, keep their youth at home and, and, and internet stable internet connectivity and reliable is the key to it, Council or one of the keys, I should say. Council Member do you have a comment? Well, I... I note that we are missing our mayor, who is the city planner for the city of Dunsmuir. But this is a very exciting and important conversation. So I guess I'm looking at uh, the chair of our economic development committee and the city manager. I'm hoping that we could bring back on our next agenda this month, whatever the preferred option is, to keep this conversation going over the next 18 to 24 months, who should be representing the city and its interests to advance the dream that old people, young people, students, businesses, and there are several tech businesses in Dunsmuir, Jeff, you'll be pleased to know. Oh, I bet there are. They oh, need yeah. upload and download speeds that are far you better bet they than do. they could get. Mm -hmm. So I, I very much appreciate the time that you and Jeff have spent, and I hope this is a high priority for us going into 2021. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Arth. Uh, City Manager? Yeah, just to wrap this up, um, guys, let's, let's keep in touch, and I think the next thing that we should do is start doing our prospecting and uh, see what we've got out there, and um, yeah, let's, let's move forward, see what our interest is, and and uh, we'll come back to council with something uh, more concrete. All right. Thank you so much. We really appreciate uh, everyone's time on, on this and look forward to continuing the conversation. Thank you. Look everyone. Forward to yeah, we appreciate it. Yeah. And, I'll, and we'll stay in touch, Todd, as, uh, you know, because we'd like to get down there in the next couple of weeks and maybe, you know, even if we can, I don't know, hand out some flyers, Andy and I'll talk about it. But the fall and the winter will be a good time to prospect and, and, and evaluate. Um, anyways, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff, Andy, we appreciate it. Uh, let's move forward into a discussion with Chief Padilla about the state of fire safety in Dunsmuir and needed resources. Um, I believe we, we still have the chief on, yes. It looks like he's in. Good evening, Chief. 
Uh, Wendy, could uh, you unmute uh, Chief Padilla? Yes. Go ahead, Chief. Still muted. Chief Padilla, I'm asking to unmute you, and I think you need to just verify you'd like to be unmuted. Chief Padilla? He raised his hand again. Yeah, I've unmuted him. Um, if you're going to unmute yourself, it's in the left-hand corner of your screen if you're using a computer or phone. Yes, Chief Padilla, yeah. you could unmute yourself, please. There we go. No. Uh, Chief Padilla, if you're on the phone, dial, uh, dial star six and they, that may unmute you. Doesn't seem like we are able to unmute Chief Padilla. Um, the other option, Chief, is to dial in on the phone. And the dial-in number is on the first page of our agenda. My guess is he's uh, working through remote desktop. And if you work through remote desktop, the, you can't um, use the mic. Uh, I, just, I send a message to, um, to call in. OK, and did you give him the dial-in number? Uh, he should have it at the top of the agenda. Yeah. Do you want to move on to the next item? I believe we should move on to the next item, um, and then when he comes on, uh, perhaps we can close that one up uh, in an orderly fashion and move on to him. But if, um, I don't know if... Um, what Blake if he doesn't have an agenda? Should we tell him, somebody say the phone number. Okay. It's one six six nine nine hundred six eight three three. 800 the meeting ID... If perhaps... Well, two four one three five four four two, Chief. If you want to try it that way, he hasn't been able to um, chat, at least with me or with the general public. Wendy, have you received any messages over chat? Uh, no, I haven't. And when when he first signed on, I asked him if he wanted to test his mic, and I I didn't get a reply, unfortunately. Okay, so I, I think um, I don't know if Blake could give him a, a call, perhaps real um, quick. Actually, it looks like we just have a phone call in here now. So let's see if that's Chief Padilla. Okay. Let's see if I can unmute him. Uh, Chief Padilla, if that's you that's joined us, you may need to press star six on your phone to unmute yourself. Chief Padilla. Yes. Go ahead. Welcome, Chief Dia. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, okay, so um, I guess I've been asked to go ahead and talk about the uh, state of the fire safety uh, within the city. Uh, before I get to that, uh, I just want to give a quick overview of kind of what's been going on in California. I think uh, most everybody is pretty aware of it. But uh, as of the uh, end of September, um, the state has suffered uh, 8,000 approximately 8,155 fires that have burned over 4 million acres, destroyed 6,200 structures, and resulted in uh, approximately 30 deaths. Um, some of the more recent fires that have been close to us, the Zog Fire uh, in Shasta County, which burned, uh, has burned 55,000 acres. It's only 26% contained as of today. Had four fatalities and about 146 structures destroyed. The first 24 hours, uh, it burned approximately 25,000 25, acres. The Slater fire up in Happy Camp uh, burned 
burned 154,000 acres and had two fatalities. Uh, the catalyst, besides the dry fuels, uh, has been the wind. Uh, spot fires two to three miles out in front of the fire, uh, igniting uh, homes in the communities and uh, the neighborhoods. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's staggering. It's been a real eye opener for me as I've been out on fires, um, and my staff has too. Approximately uh, 30 days uh, this year already, and just seeing the destruction and knowing that uh, I don't want to see that in my backyard. Um, you know, it's uh, we talk a lot about home hardening, uh, making homes more fire resistant. You know, with the exterior uh, building materials. Um, but uh, still, we continue to lose homes um, even after uh, you know the state and uh, local fire departments and districts have um, you know conducted inspections, uh, and we have too. Um, we've been lucky enough, I guess, to dodge um, you know the the fatal blow of a catastrophic fire. Um, but it just you know, I look I look today on what you know, potential we're in right now until um, December. And um, for the, the the next few months where it's gonna be warmer and drier than average, um, the significant fire potential has us just in the normal range uh, for that time of year. It's not the extreme or, extreme or critical. But um, our, our staff, um, you know, certainly uh, a lot of my volunteers work so obviously at times uh, during the daytime, we are at uh, minimum staffing, but uh, you know, we, we will always respond and with our automatic aids, with our um, local fire departments, uh, Mount Shasta, Castella, Cal Fire, and the US Forest Service. Resources are stripped down low, but uh, ultimately you know, we'll, um, we're gonna be there to respond. Um, some of the things that we've done proactively uh, along with uh, the Dunsford Fire Safe Council, um, the Fire Safe Council uh, did apply for a U.S. Forest Service grant called the Stevens Grant uh, for about $600,000 to reduce visit vegetation along the evacuations route, if routes uh, somewhere near uh, Cantera Loop um, all the way down to the county line. Um, you know, a, a big problem we've had in, in town here is that we have just a, a breathtaking uh, view just with all of our trees. Uh, it's, it's a real peaceful area, but at, at the same time, that big old canopy, um, you know, leaves us in a, in a lot of danger. Um, you know, some of the trees are encroaching over the roads to where they would probably, during a, a wildfire event, be almost unpassable for anybody, for whether it be for people trying to escape or firefighters uh, and public safety put coming in to go ahead and provide evacuations or suppression efforts. Um, so I'm hoping that we're going to go ahead and and uh, and be awarded that grant. We won't find out again for another two or three more months. Um, the, we did get a uh, the Shasta Valley Resource uh, Conservation District uh, did apply for a grant. Um, here in uh, for Dunsmere, and it's it starts at the county line and goes up to a, about Oak Street, and it's to reduce fuels along uh, the I-5 corridor, um, mainly where the the structures are at along uh, the eastern side of I-5. Um, and I'm, uh, that work is, is scheduled to begin in October. I think they had a job show with the contractor. And uh, I mean, the last thing left to do is actually probably just meet with a few property owners to begin that. So it's a step in the right direction. Um, as far as um, you know, our preparedness. So um, obviously, we can we can always do more. Um, my uh, inspections. I wish I could have got uh, more done, you know, before the fire season started. Um, again, with my. My, most of my volunteers working um, at other jobs that uh, and we can't pay them, you know, to go ahead and, and uh, be a firefighter. But uh, if I could have a, you know, a little bit more assistance, I guess, in the prevention part of it, um, I think it would it would help. Um, is it going to make it 100% sure that we're, we'll never be affected by a fire? Probably not. Um, but I I do know that the current um, 
uh, financial situation that we're in right now with the city um, that it probably would prohibit, you know, hiring somebody to, to assist me or some a group of uh, people to assist me. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm hopeful, you know, like, uh, that the weather's going to change. Uh, Long-term weather, uh, like I said earlier, is hotter and drier. Um, yeah. We can only be vigilant, I guess, and uh, be fire safe as best we can without uh, altering our lifestyles too much. But um, the transient population that we have coming through uh, in the several months has been a challenge, um, especially um, starting their campfires along, you know, the river, the I-5 or the railroad corridor. Um, we have been notified of some of them, other ones they've already you know lit the campfire and their train came and they left so it didn't the fire didn't go anywhere it stayed within the fire ring that they had made but um you know that's always a potential problem as the bradley fire in 2017 showed us so um it's not i don't paint a pretty a pretty picture by any means but uh um, I think, you know, all of us ought to be, you know, concerned. Um, I know I am. I, um, but if there's anything else, um, information I can share with you, any questions you have, I'm, I'll try to answer best I, I can. Thank you, Chief Padilla. Um, we really appreciate you being here with us tonight and sharing all that information. Um, Councilman Keisler, would you like to begin? Chief, I want to thank you for for everything that you do. I called this man a couple weeks ago. I was trying to get some stuff for the rotary put down, and he was busy on the fire. But uh, he took time to to advise me and tell me what to do. So um, I appreciate everything that you do. Your concerns are my concerns. And uh, um, the money thing that you mentioned about getting help, that that that's a concern too. But I just, I just, I thank you for everything that you do for us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Councilman Deutsch. Yes. I'd just like to and, um, echo that as well. Uh, the one big concern I have is um, how are we doing in terms of um, getting some of the cleanups on the yards and things that you have identified? Are they taking notice and following up? Yeah, I'd say right now we're probably at like 99% compliance. Um, I've been working with um, the code enforcement officer and between him and I, uh, we've been, um, you know, visiting uh, properties and, you know, making people aware that they are, uh, have a we've identified them as, as having, um, you know, not being in compliance with the uh, weed abatement um, policies. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilman Art. Uh, certainly an expression of gratitude for keeping our communities safe. And <clears throat> when we were talking about this in our agenda review meeting with the mayor and the city manager, besides getting the factual information as to how safe we're feeling as of the beginning of October, I do hope <clears throat> Dan, that, that you and your staff look toward 2021 and 2022. The city has a budget. There is a code enforcement budget component. There's a fire department budget component. And we need to keep working together. So if you think the city would benefit from four free cleanup days like we did the summer before that will plug right into the RFP we have for our solid waste hauler, whoever that enterprise might be. Um, we do need to continue educating and making sure residences and businesses stay safe. So I just, because of the existential threat, I think you may find a fair amount of sympathy as we go into the new normal in 2021 for increasing our vigilance and assuring everybody 
that we really are fire safe. But thank you so much to you and your troops for what you do. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Councilman uh, Art. Uh, I do agree with you, though. I think uh, we could we could definitely use, you know, uh, more than just one uh, cleanup day. Uh, at one of the uh, Fire Safety Council meetings um, that we had, uh, one of the, um, the members had mentioned something about a program that, that uh, they'd like to start where um, they would help neighbors in their neighborhood um, you know, reduce the, if they're if they're elderly, or you know, physically just cannot um, clean up their 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 property. That that we could do like a day, uh, pick out a neighborhood, and uh, just people come and volunteer um, to help reduce some of the fuels on their property, uh, which I thought was a great idea. Um, you know, just neighbors helping neighbors. So um, that be that might be something else that we can try. Well, a little municipal jealousy. I mean, over the past, in the summer of 2019, it seemed like the city of Mount Shasta worked out something with what I will call the equivalent of the California Conservation Corps. But, you know, young people that would come and if appropriate, whether it's working with the sheriff's office and alternatives to incarceration people or young people hired by the state. Um, I hope we can tap into those resources to help those that can't do it on their own or can't afford it. Thank I agree. You. Yeah, we'll do that. That's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for being with us tonight and giving us this update. Um, I, I am sorry to report that um, we are a little constrained when it comes to the general fund budget right now. Um, I'm sure you're aware that their council has placed a ballot measure um, for a sales tax increase on the ballot in November. Um, and that may, depending on its outcome, free up some funds to um, help with fire resiliency. We certainly hope that that would be the case. It sounds promising. Thank you. Mr. Vice Mayor? Yes. I think that we should, as a council, thank the community for participating. I believe Dan Pachi, he said that we're about 90%. So that's, that's a good. And, and thank the people for helping keep our town safe. Yes, thank you. And um, extend the thanks, of course, to our code enforcement officer. Um, I think that that partnership sounds like uh, it's coming, coming um, <clears throat> to serve the citizens of Dunsmere well. Um, are there any further questions for Chief Padilla? All right, thank you so much, Chief. Um, have a wonderful evening. All right, thank you. Thank you for your time. Yeah, all right, bye-bye. All right, we'll now move into item C, discussion of the sale of a city-owned parcel on Shear Avenue, assessor's parcel number 058-221-100. Um, city manager? Sure. So um, this is something that came before council in uh, probably early January. And there is a gentleman who owns two parcels nearby. There is, uh, for some reason, at like a 10, 15 foot strip between the two properties that the city owns. And um, at the time, it was the understanding of, uh, you know, all of us that that was just that 10 foot strip that led to the water. And um, we got, a, you know, it's kind of an informal appraisal that that 10 foot strip was worth less than $2,000. And it turns out what um, uh, folks want is if you look at the drawing that has um, the red on all the colors and it has the, uh, the parcels one, two, and three marked, three is, um, you know, the abandoned city parcel that extends to the waterfront. It still leaves a 10 foot buffer for fishing, which we have all around the city. Um, and you look at the uh, photograph um, from the front of the house, you would never uh, uh, mistake that for a fishing access. So it's, it's clearly um, something that, that's saleable and makes sense, but there's one rub in that um, I also, uh, when we were looking at the, this 
full parcel now that it that is along that waterfront. Um, I got another informal appraisal that um, said that it might be worth as much as fifteen thousand. So working with this property owner, uh, he agreed to offer um, uh, over eight thousand dollars and then pay for all the transfer costs. Now late. Uh, yesterday, he contacted me and changed his mind, and he wants to offer five thousand. And um, you know, I don't know how you guys feel. It's the kind of parcel that I think that um, nobody's ever going to mistake that uh, they would assume it's part of this guy's land. But I, I do have a little bit of a um, bad taste in my mouth that this was, um, you know, kind of uh, the offer was lowered at the very last minute. But again, it's property that we aren't using. It isn't impacting fishing. It isn't a fishing access. And we still have a 10 foot easement along the front of that, um, that, you know, the river that can still be used by fishermen. So I just wanted to throw it out there for you guys and see what you think. Thank you. Um, well, are there any questions for uh, city manager? Uh, Todd, the, um, <clears throat> looking at the map here, there's the part that's between the two. And then there's also the part that runs closer to the river, right? right. Is that all part of what we're selling? And I guess the idea would be that the parts are close to the river would never really entail anybody wanting to go there once we've given off that center piece of land. Is that right? Uh, I think that whether we sell it or not, I don't think it's a, it's a viable fishing access. No, there are so many other accesses that are okay. not, not one of them. If you look at the photo of the front of the house, it's really that strip between the two um, utility sheds. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, any more clarifying questions? Uh, I'm I'm a little un. Is the offer on the table tonight eight thousand two hundred and fifty dollars or five thousand uh, dollars? He pulled the rug out in the last minute and changed it to five thousand after we printed the agenda. Okay. All right. Are there any other clarifying questions? Well, I, I, I do. Have, the other is the suggestion that there was an appraisal that said it might be worth as much as 15. Yeah, and you know, this, these are not real professional appraisals. This is, um, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but uh, um, Councilman Bryant, you mentioned um, this, uh, these two gentlemen that are up in Mount Shasta. Um, mm -hmm. They're no longer doing appraisals right now, but um, they had said offhand to me that um, it might be worth as much as that, but I don't think they did a lot of due diligence behind this. I, I really don't know how much this is worth. I think, you know, what is a parcel worth? It's what somebody will pay for it. And I don't see anybody coming in here and saying, I want a 10 foot wide parcel, but, <laughs> but on, well, the other, we don't, you know, on the other hand, I, I don't like that, you know, um, we've been talking for months on end and we had an agreement. And now after the agenda went out, uh, maybe it, it involves some more discussions. But it's up to you guys. I, you know, it's more money in our coffers, and do we really want to haggle over an extra three thousand five hundred dollars? Well, um, just a point of clarity here. You know, the, the ten foot section seems fairly worthless between their houses, um, but when you go to the river, the parcel does have two hundred and thirty six feet of river frontage, and on the wide side there, and it's not very wide, but it gets. Am I correct in reading that that it's over thirty feet wide? Um, uh, that, yeah, that, that's fair. So, I mean, it, it seems to me valuation wise that, you know, a property's value, it kind of depends on its potential uses. Um, it looks like it's unbuildable. I don't know if the planner or city planner has verified that there's no possible construction. It looks like that to me, but there's no room for construction there. Yeah. So it, there are four parcels that are adjacent to it. So the two parcels um, that are shown, one and two, are owned by the same people. And then um, the other parcel that's adjacent to it, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a very narrow parcel. Mm -hmm. um, there, it really isn't usable. It's, it's sort of landlocked. And um, I think it's, I think this, uh, the gentleman that's interested in it is just, it's, it, for him, it's weird that he's got a 10 foot section between his property that isn't his. And I think it's sticking in his crop. Yeah. yeah, I could see that. And he probably uses the property in the back as if it's his own already. And so wouldn't feel a particular incentive. You know, have we investigated what the boundary 
between the part parallel to the river is and the back of his properties? The part parallel to the river is, um, is an easement that um, the city owns that allows people that are waiting or wanted to fish along the bank and walk that bank to continue to do so. Mm -hmm. So our alternative option would be to tear up some of his driveway and make it a real river access. Correct. If we were to ever try to use this parcel. Yeah. And I just put that driveway in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I, 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 if you guys notice those houses just been freshly painted. Yes, I did the painting. I did the driveway. I did all the work there. I know this piece of property very well. What it is is the guy owns one property to the south that goes all the way to the river. And then there's a strip between the two that is the city's property that basically somebody can walk down and go fishing. And the guy that owns the same, he owns both piece of property, but the property to the north, there's a little corner in the backyard that he can't consider his own backyard. Now, I got to agree with Todd. You came to me and you wanted, you, this was all your idea and you wanted to give us $8,000. I like that idea. I think that's where, that would be, that would be my opinion and my vote to give me what you originally offered. But that's me. Public comment. Yeah, let's move forward to public comment. But first let's clear up any clarifying questions. Are we to address any remaining clarifying questions. Seeing none, let's open this up to public comment. Anyone who wishes to make a public comment can raise their hands. They can do that in the participants function or hit <coughs> star nine if they called in. Um, they'll be allowed three minutes to comment on the item. Seeing none, uh, is there any public comment one last time? All right, I will now close the public comment and move us into discussion. And Mr. Vice Mayor, I apologize for jumping in. Just when you guys said tear up the driveway, you got you have my full undivided attention. <laughs> you just put it in. All right, well, um, this gentleman did approach us, I believe originally. Yep. Um, so I've been going on with um, ongoing discussions for about nine months now, and I'm, I'm kind of a um, nice guy. No, I'm nothing against him, just a little bit tired of it. Um, and, uh, and uh, you, know, my, uh, you know, my humble suggestion is to, to hold on and, um, well, either, well, either let it go because it isn't really a whole lot of money. It's money in our coffers. But um, if you did offer it, I, I feel like a, a little bit um, like we need to work that work that angle a little harder. Yeah, I, I mean, I think there's a potential for the property being worth quite a bit more than 5,000 um, and maybe quite a bit more than 8,000 personally. How, however, um, the number of people interested in it um, would be somewhat small. I mean, those two parcels. Yeah, I think. We would have, one, one would imagine the highest uh, interest in it. So we would probably benefit, is my thought, from selling it to this gentleman um, if he's willing to uh, pay an equitable rate because we can't give away land just because it's convenient for him and we can make some money off of it. Um, you know, I, I'm personally in favor of perhaps accepting his original offer if he'd like to do that. And if not, um, he can not have the property and we can do future development. I'd second that motion. Well, if, if there's other um, thoughts on it, I'd love to have those in the mix. Well, I'd like to uh, add mine if I could. Uh, the one thing that I, I think is, is that in terms of the difference between $5,000 and $8,000, when you look at the $3,000, how much more work is that going to take in terms of negotiations over time? In terms of anybody else having any interest in buying a 10-foot piece of property, um, I don't think there would be anybody else. So in the long run, accepting $5,000 is $5,000 we don't have. That's my thoughts. So I'm not ready to make a motion, but I'm open to uh, hearing more. Yeah. No, and I mean, I would like us to be clear about this. It is not just a 10 foot section. If it were just 10 feet between a house leading to nowhere, it would have very, very little value indeed. Um, but it's 10 feet leading to a 263 foot 
river frontage that's 30 feet wide at one point. Um, so yep. someone could theoretically have land by the river in their own little access. Um, you couldn't build anything there, but you certainly could own it and uh, enjoy it um, in not, not a great deal of privacy. But you know, part of the reason why I think the 8,000 is substantiated is that it's not just a 10 foot stretch along the side of a property. That's just the walkway to the main part of this property. Councilman Arth, do you have any thoughts on the? I do. I'm, I'm a real estate investor. And if you look at the map, you've already made the obvious point, Mr. Vice Mayor, to a person off the street, the way the lot is configured, it's basically unbuildable. And even though it offers frontage on the upper Sacramento River, what are you going to do with it? There's not much you can do. But if you're fortunate enough to own parcel number one and parcel number two, then yep. the part that the city owns is immensely valuable to whatever you plan to do with the sum of the three parcels. So I'm happy to support the city manager. If the offer on the table tonight is 5,000, I move to reject it. All right, uh, there's an offer. Is there a second? I uh, second the rejection. I'll second the rejection. All right. Uh, discussion of the motion at hand? That is a discussion like to, of a $5,000 offer. To reject the $5,000 offer and go back to the table and get the original offer that the man offered. That's Mr. Art. If the gentleman wants to pay for a formal appraisal, let him do it because I think he's gonna be unhappy. You're absolutely right. And like you said, he owns one and two and three is crucial to whatever his plans are. You know, it's just, and you're the one, he started it, he came to us with this thing. He got us on board and here we are tonight. He wants to pull the rug out as our city manager says, that ain't cool. Hey, right. I think I, I, we made the motion um, in this discussion. Um, Councilman Deutsch, do you have any uh, thoughts on this motion? No, I'm fine to, uh, to go ahead with the vote. Okay. Nice right. vote. If, if I'm able to go back to this gentleman and he agrees to his original price, um, are, are we okay with moving forward with that? I would be. Why don't we just change, amend the uh, motion then? Please. Peter? So the motion would be, the new motion would be that the city manager go back and if the uh, the original price was agreed upon to accept that offer, not the $5,000 offer. Well, essentially we're rejecting an offer and count, we're accepting an offer subject to our counter offer of adjusting the price back to the stated price in our agenda packet. Well, we're leaving it to a real estate guy to figure out how to say it, right? But yeah, that's it. I mean, there's no more riverfront property in Dunsmuir for sale at these prices. So I would hate on behalf of the citizens that really own this property to sell it too cheap. The only thing that's Absolutely. happening with Southern Siskiyou real estate is it's skyrocketing. Yeah, so if the gentleman would like to wait, um, you know, I, I would definitely make our offer um, only good for say maximum a week for consideration before it's withdrawn. Okay. But it's got to come back for approval. Okay. Well, uh, I thought we were looking at the idea of saying that if it's going to be the eight thousand, that would be approved. I think what Todd would like us to be able to do is to have a motion that, on one hand, would allow him to accept the eight thousand dollar offer. On the other hand, if it's not accepted, then we would come back. As a carrot. Um, I would have to agree with that. That's my motion. That is correct. I just, if if we could have within this motion, and we can restate it for Wendy if we need to. Um, to reject the $5,000 offer and counter at the original offer. Let's state the exact sum so we're not misleading anyone. We go down to it. Um, 8250 Yeah. Transfer. Okay. And then, um, yeah, 8250 with him paying all closing costs. 
then, um, but make the offer on his part. He doesn't have to purchase it within a week. You know, I don't know if we need to, you can negotiate the details, but make the offer expire within a week. He needs to get back to us and not waste any more of our city manager's time uh, okay. on an unimportant. Now we need a vote. Mr. Vice we need a vote. All right, Councilman Arth. No. No? No. No. Okay. Well, you were the second. Wait, what do you mean no? All right. It's too cheap. Too cheap. Okay. Councilman Kaiser. If this is for to sell it for the eight thousand two forty, the original offer, then that would be my. I would say yes. I would say yes. Okay. Um, seeing that there's some contention here, um, that we might end up in a potential tie. I, I would move that we table this, unfortunately, until we have our fifth member. Um, so, so we prolong it even longer. Well, motion. Yeah. I guess I, I well, will. Well, the potential no. buyer will know that five thousand isn't going to work. Yeah, I will say no to this motion because I think if this is close, and it is, um, we should have the input of the full council. So okay. Two two, so we didn't carry, so we'll bring it back, right? Yeah. So then I would like to make a motion to reject the five thousand dollar offer. That was my first motion. Yes. All right. Um, then um, can Dave? I have that as a second? Dave? Yeah. Yeah, I second. Okay. Motion and a second. Um, all those let's see, um, Councilman Arth. Aye. Councilman Keisler. Aye. Councilman Deutsch. Aye. Mayor Lucchese is absent, and myself is also an aye. All right, let's move forward into um, item number, I believe it's 12, consideration of future agenda items. And um, the first that comes forth is, of course, we're going to need uh, this item back on there um, if there's more input. You know, you can serve the rejection. And if he has, you know, a counter offer to that, um, we can consider it at that time. If I could add something for Councilman Arth, um, I made a call to State Historic Preservation about our uh, proposed meeting. They haven't gotten back to me. Um, I'm hoping I hear something tomorrow, but as soon as I do, I'll get back to you and Mayor Lucchese. And, and that's, that's shorthand for the excellent agenda review meeting that I had with the mayor <laughs> and Todd. <laughs> as, uh, and I, as I use my centerpiece as an article out of the Dunsmuir News from 2014, <laughs> when Big Dave was mayor and all the members of the planning commission and all the members of the city council wanted to create a five member oversight commission for the historic district and Mayor Lucchese actually knows the right part of the state of California, the Office of Historic Preservation. So I reached out to them and we are soon going to be meeting to get their advice as to what the ideal oversight mechanism for the Dunsmuir Historic District would look like and what state and federal funds are available and what incentives we can offer to building owners to make sure they honor the historic district. So Good job. We're not there listening. yet, but it's coming. Good job. Thank you. All right, are there any other future agenda items um, being brought up at this point? Not for me. Me neither. All right. Um, well, thank you, gentlemen. So you know future agenda items being discussed now. If any come up, um, certainly email city manager and we can get those in the queue. <coughs> um, I appreciate everyone's participation tonight in the meeting, especially the members of the public that were with us. Um, it really is um, important to have your input along the way. Um, I will now consider motions to adjourn. I make a motion that we adjourn. All right. I'll second. Motion that we adjourn. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Again, aye. motion carries. We shall adjourn at 7.53 p.m. October 1st, 2020. Have a great evening, gentlemen. And thank you. you. Good job, Matthew. Thank you. Good job, Matthew.
Thanks, Matthew. Thank you, Wendy. Good night. Thank you for all the help. You're welcome.